dude's got a studio in here too. Black and Bloom, have you heard of it? No, no. Fuck it. Where the hell are you taking us? It'll be fine. <laughs> hey, what's up, brothers? How are y'all doing? Good. Rocking, man. What's up, man? Yeah, me too. It's not working. Boo. Yeah. OK. You know, we always get pegged as a black metal brewery, but I mean, we listen to all kinds of shit. You know, classic all the way through to, you know, the stoner to doom to the, you know, poppy type stuff yeah. or, you know, whatever. It's, as long as it's heavy and kind of extreme, like, that's, we're into it. The music is definitely, like, it's a core concept. It's, it's what we're about. It's what I'm about. You know, I grew up listening to metal and I still listen to it today. It's, we're a metal brewery because I'm a metalhead. You know, yeah. there's not much more to it than that. There's a lot of people who come into this brewery specifically because we are the metal brewery in town. So to open their eyes to some of these new styles, whether it be you know, some more hot forward beers or the really funky sour stuff that we've been putting out there, it's been really cool to watch those regulars sort of develop as beer lovers as well. The beer is first, and if something isn't up to spec, or if it isn't up to our standards, it never sees the tap. Maybe that's a difference between us and some other breweries. We're real small. Like, we're having to brew pretty frequently to keep the tap room stocked up. And we brewed 350 barrels last year, which is not a lot of beer by a lot of standards. And I'm pretty sure that 340 or more of that was served here in the tap room. So it's really important for us to maintain a, a really high caliber customer service experience because it's the only place you're getting our beer. So the only place you're experiencing it is very likely here in our tap room. So when you come in here, you're immediately presented with a totally different environment. We got this long, straight, and narrow sort of space that we're working with here. It's a shotgun bar. You don't find those in Denver. I grew up on the East Coast, now outside of Boston, so I'm used to more shotgun-style spaces because everything's jammed in together. Then you've got our massive communal table. It's probably the biggest one in the entire city. And then as you start walking close to the bar, you're going to hear more and more of the music that we're playing, which is totally different than anybody else's playlist at their tap room. Once you actually order a beer, you're getting a totally different beer than all the other breweries as well. You know, lower ABV, super flavorful, session beer. I've always liked to be able to have more than a couple of beers and not be totally wrecked. So from day one, we have focused on doing a lot of sessionable beers. They may not be like 8%, but they have the flavor profile that some of these 8% beers will have. This is a grisette. Grisettes were Saison-style beers that were brewed in France for miners, actually. Most commercial lagers like Budweiser or Coors are right around 5%, and this is just under that. Since it was a sort of extinct style and we've you know, brought it back, we assume that it probably had some low-level acidity because there wasn't so much control over the microorganisms back in those days. So it's got a little bit of that tartness that makes it super drinkable. And that's balanced out with this really cool grapefruit aroma and flavor and a little bit of like peach too. None of those flavors are coming from hops or malt or anything. It's all really yeast driven, which is pretty awesome. This is a beer called Mananin. It's a sour brown ale that we ferment in whiskey barrels. I didn't model this beer after a Flanders brown, which would be traditionally a Belgian brown. So I wanted to do something where the base was unique to our brewery, the ingredients that we use, and kind of use Flanders brown as a, as a jumping off point, but then to go 100% Britannomyces fermentation. Britannomyces is a different type of yeast than normal brewer's yeast. It just behaves a little bit differently and gives different characteristics. This has been sitting in our cold room for a long time, and it's nice to have some of this still sitting around that we can go back and look at it and see how it develops over time. Zach was a regular before he was uh, working here. Right, I was, I was uh, the brewer at a different brewery, yeah. and then I would hang out here. Yeah. So yeah. when I got off shift. And then I, I, I kind of maybe poached him a little bit. So, uh, but I think it was, it was good for everybody. Mm -hmm.
We are at Hogshead Brewing Company. We came here because it's my favorite brewery here in town. I like these guys because they do a lot of like really legit English style beer. You know, the beers are really nice and mild. A lot of them OABV, sessionable beers, and just really nice, easy drinking beer, but still super flavorful. All right, we taking this outside? It's actually straight edge through my, like all of high school and almost all of college too. I was, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't do anything. It was kind of boring. In my final year of college, I finally was like, okay, you know, like I'm, I'm an adult. I feel like I can handle myself responsibly. I'm not gonna let this sort of thing get out of hand. So I decided to try beer. And the first beer I ever actually had was bought for me by my college roommates. And it was a stone arrogant bastard because they said it was appropriate for me. From that first beer, I was interested in how to make beer as well. And it just became an all-encompassing hobby for me. All I wanted to do was brew beer. So I wrote the business plan, and then the location hunt took forever. I wanted to be in that sort of like neighborhood that had that alternative feel. I found a spot that I really thought would work well for, for what we were trying to do. We've never brewed something that we didn't want to brew. We didn't brew something because we felt like there was some sort of uh, market demand for something that we didn't want to brew. You know, we just make the beer that we want to drink. It sounds selfish, but it's not about what everybody else wants. It's about what we want to brew, and hopefully they like it too. I try to be super aware of what's going on around the city. I don't want to make the same beers that somebody in the city is making. We're great friends with a lot of the breweries that have been here for 18 to 20 years, you know? So the guys at Great Divide love what we're doing, and, you know, we're great friends with them. There are a bunch of breweries that have been here a lot longer than we have and are, you know, really appreciative to have other breweries here in town that are producing high-caliber beer. We're uh, standing outside the Acid Temple, which is our new production facility that we're setting up. I'm gonna have to like run across the entire building to turn the lights on here, so. <laughs> yeah, we have we have one like light switch all the way in the back of the building. It's not even a light switch, it's just the breaker for the circuits right now. <laughs> you know. Oh shit. Oh. oh man. We gotta clean this fucking place up. <laughs> you know, nothing's set up, but it's here. And you can see it's it's a little bit bigger than the other one. Three times as big as the other. <laughs> this is our bottler. We pump in the beer, it sits in this reservoir, and you stick a bottle on, and it fills through this. Nick's made us a little pneumatic capper. It's a really manual process. You just set a bottle right here, you pull it through, front and back labels. I mean, yeah, I, I really my goals at this point are just to improve every year I want to make the best beer in Denver. Like, I don't want it to be a close call. I'm not there yet, but I'm working my way as much as I can. And won't rest until I'm there. One of the biggest goals I have is just having a job and providing jobs that are awesome. I really just want to provide a lot of fun experiences for the people that I'm fortunate enough to be working with and to give them the opportunity to kind of just do what they want to do and see where that takes them. I don't want to have a true in every city. I want to have a true in Denver, and I want people to come check it out.